Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite things ever, and that is bow hunting, rutting coos deer during the month of January here in Arizona. Hey, what's up? It's Josh from the Dialed In Hunter. We are on the tail end of October right now, heading into November at the time of recording this. Hunting seasons are in full swing. Um, so I thought it'd be a great time to sit down and talk to you about something that's coming up here shortly during the month of January, and that is bow hunting coos deer during the rut. Um, this is something that I am super passionate about. I've been doing this for about eight years now. Before that, a good friend and I actually swore off hunting coos deer with a bow because they were so dang hard. And we just were like, screw that, we're gonna hunt mule deer. But the more time I spent out there, you know, some of this habitat overlaps mule deer and coos deer. And the more like bigger coos bucks that I saw, watching their behavior, watching them fight, watching them chase does all over the place, they're just an intriguing animal to me, man. And then once I got my first one, I was like, this is it. I, I love this. They, they're, they're the ultimate challenge for a, a spot and stock bow hunter. So I'm going to go into where I've found success, where I haven't found success, how I've found success. Okay. And hopefully by the end of that, you've got a pretty good outlook on how to tackle January with your bow. Um, for those that don't know, coos deer are a subspecies of a white-tailed deer. They are basically just a smaller version of a white-tail that lives in the desert, okay? They're super adaptable, okay? You can find coos deer anywhere from 2,500 feet all the way north of 10,000 feet, okay? So up in the timber, down in the desert flats, a coos can find a home there and, and, and make a good living. They're very difficult to approach with a bow because they're always on edge. This is a really small deer, okay? Like when you get one on the ground, it's striking how small they are. So everything wants to eat them, all right? And if you were out there living, living in the woods, the desert, whatever, and everything wanted to eat you, your head would be on a swivel as well. So all the little things matter with approaching a coos deer. They're very, very wiry, and they're, they're, they're quite honestly paranoid. Um, I've seen coos deer get spooked by the wind, like glassing them, and then a gust of wind comes, and then they jump like a cat because the wind scared them. So in order to get one spot in stock, you've got your work cut out for you. So um, the, the, where I, I think the best place to start here is... Um, is how to find coos deer. Um, so the best way that I've found to locate coos deer is through glassing, all right? Now, yes, you can you can find them up in the timber and you can sit in tree stands, sit on trails and stuff, hunt them just like whitetails, that works. But where I've found the most success is, is by sitting up high, glassing a lot of country, um, and, uh, you know, just basically grid searching mm -hmm. with my optics all over the place, looking for, for rutting deer, bedded deer, feeding deer, whatever it is. So the best way that I have found to glass for coos deer is by getting your binoculars and mounting them on a tripod. All right. I, I hunted a lot of years without a tripod. Um, and I found coos deer but when I got a tripod and I put those binoculars on there, it was just an absolute game changer because the tripod allows you to see movement. Because coos are so small and the color of their, their hide blends in so well with their surroundings, they literally melt into their environment, okay? So by being able to lock your binoculars in place and grid search kind of within your view, um, you're going to be able to see the little things that you wouldn't see if you were just hand holding your binoculars. Things like the flick of an ear, the glint of an antler, stuff like that. Okay. Um, now January deer are fairly active. So you're probably going to see deer running around bucks, chasing does and stuff like that. But then once the heat of the day comes, the does bed down. All right. And the, and the bucks will mess around with them here and there, but 
you know, bucks bed down too, and you might have some slow hours during the day. So being able to really like scan into these thicker areas with your binos mounted on a tripod really, really goes a long way. And then once you do find a deer, you can lock your binoculars in place and you're not going to lose that deer. I can't tell you how many times in the past where I didn't have a tripod and I found a deer and I was like, hey, check out this deer to my hunting buddy. And then I go to look and I can't find him again. That is how, that is how magical a coos deer is on a hillside. They, they disappear, man. So my ideal setup for glassing for, for coos deer is I like a 10 by 42 Vortex UHD razor and then a 65 millimeter razor HD spotter. That is my ideal glassing setup for coos deer, obviously with a tripod, okay? Um, the reason I like that setup is it's just a little more versatile for me personally. There's a lot of people down here that live and die by 15 by 56 binos. Um, I've used them in the past. I'm just not a fan of how big they are. Um, I just like something a little smaller that I can hand hold. I feel, feel good hand holding uh, 10 by 42s. I can also mount them on a tripod though. And then when I find something that I want a closer look at, I slap the 65 millimeter spotter on there and uh and i can really hone in on that deer and see if i want to go after him so typically what i like to do is i like to get up high in the morning uh a general rule of thumb in terms of where to glass for coos deer is going to be uh, now rules are made to be broken okay but just hear me out this is a great starting point put the sun at your back in the morning and then look into the sun in the evening what that's going to do is it's going to put you're gonna be looking at sunlit hillsides in the morning and you're gonna be looking into the shade in the evening, all right? Deer will be out feeding on these sunny hillsides in the morning and then they'll be coming out from bedding into the shade in the evening. So it's just like a good kind of kind of uh, plan to follow and you'll find deer doing that. Um, what I really like to do though, my, my favorite thing is I really like to pay attention to main north south ridges okay and particularly with fingers coming off of them so if you've got a north south ridge with fingers coming down say they're coming down you know to the east and you're looking west this is really cool this is one of my favorite setups okay so these fingers that come down off this north south ridge the north side of the finger is going to be thicker and the south side of the finger is generally going to be more open so you got feeding and bedding so you can literally watch deer do this go back and forth great setup for glassing for coos deer i've had a lot of success finding deer doing that so in terms of like how to glass like i think i've already really kind of touched on that but you really want to you, you want to grid search for these things um and then grid search more you will be surprised at how long you can sit in an area glass not see anything and all of a sudden there's a buck right there and he was there the whole time and you just didn't see him so they can really really disappear if they want to and uh, finding them when they do that is very very difficult and if you're not looking uh, when they do decide to twitch their ear or something like that you're not gonna find them okay so um, glass, glass, glass some more. That's, that's really what, what uh, finding coos deer with binoculars is all about. Once you do find a, a buck that you want to go after, um, this is where I see a lot of people get hung up and I got real hung up with this when I started uh, bow hunting, rutting, rutting deer. And it was, when do you go after them? That's, that's the thing that like the question that goes across everybody's mind when they find a buck. Like, when do I go after this thing? Do I bed him down? Do I go right away? Do I watch him for a little bit and then go? Okay, so uh, when I first started doing this, I was like, oh, the books say <laughs> I gotta bed, I'm, I'm gonna bed these deer down, right? Well, that works during the early season, but the problem with that during the later season is that bucks really don't stay bedded for a long time because uh, they've got other things on their mind, okay? Uh, they, they're, they're antsy, they wanna go find does, 
if they do have does, they, they're gonna get up throughout the day and mess around with them, push them around in their bedding area. This is just how things go during the rut. So because of that, bedding a deer down to me, like intentionally bedding a deer down is kind of a waste of time in my opinion. Uh, because you can't guarantee that that deer is going to be there once you get there because the rut is just chaos He could just get his does up run them over a hill never even know you're there Okay, but that's just what they did. I've seen it happen time and time again. So what I like to do here is um, Now keep in mind. There's a little bit of instinct involved here. All right, like you're gonna develop this over time but if I find a buck in the morning and he's with some does what I'll do, that buck I know is not going anywhere. Like I put money down, that buck's going to be with those does. So I like to pay attention to the does. All right. What direction, what general direction are those does going? Okay. Yes, there is a little bit of chaos going on, right? Like the buck is pushing does around, but those does, I promise you, are moving in a general direction. So what I like to do is I try to pick that okay okay let's say they're moving they're moving to the left all right so i'll try to uh, approach in a manner that kind of puts me in that path all right and now if i can get there real fast okay if this is something where yeah i can be there in five ten minutes i'll just go straight to where they are all right but if it's further out you know try to like get ahead of those does all right and put yourself in that path and they'll essentially you could just like walk right to you all right at the very least what you should be able to do is get to a point where you can relocate these deer as they're mo sort of moving towards you and see what they do even if they don't bed exactly where you think they're gonna bed you can reassess the situation and then uh, press on with your stock so what? I, so hunting during the rut, and my mindset for hunting for spot and stock bow hunting during the rut, coos deer, the deer are being aggressive, so you be aggressive. That's how I look at it. When in the early season, they're not being aggressive. They're doing a lot of bedding. They're feeding in the morning. They bed down most of the day, and then they get up in the evening. This is a more subtle approach, right? You want to like stalk in, like wait for them to bed. You know that you can put money that they're going to be there okay and once they're in their second bed get in there do your stock shoot your deer during the rut though it's just different and you can't trust that a deer is going to be where he's bedding once you get over there so be aggressive man i look at it i'm like there's a deer over there i got a deer tag let's go this is more what i like to call like a calculated aggression okay it's like yes you're being aggressive you're moving on deer but you have a plan, you're taking note of the wind, you're taking note of, of routes to get to these deer without being seen. Um, this is just a game that you're playing during the rut. The next thing uh, that I've seen people do is they try to take shortcuts, all right? And I did this too when I first started out coos deer hunting with a bow. Um, and what I mean by shortcuts is there's always a few different routes that you can take to get to deer. Right. Usually how this goes is one of those routes is like a surefire route. All right. Like, but it's usually the longer route. Okay. There's a few other routes that it's like, oh yeah, I could go this way and I'll probably be okay. Um, don't do the probably route. That's, that's, I mean, coos deer, no shortcuts. Okay. Um, never, ever underestimate them. They are, it, it, they almost have a sixth sense, all right? They're gonna know you're there. Just take the route that you know you're not gonna be seen doing, and you're gonna have the most success doing that. We've been doing a lot of talking about uh, spot and stock hunting, which is how, that's how I prefer to hunt coos deer with a bow. It's my favorite way, but uh, coos deer are really predictable, okay? So, um, you can absolutely ambush hunt coos deer during the rut, all right? Um, if you're familiar with whitetail hunting, you can take your whitetail tactics right into Arizona and, uh, and, and likely find success. Um, good things to keep in mind here are uh, water is a thing, okay? Like 
Water's important, man. We, we're living in the desert. If there's not water, I would look elsewhere, okay? But when there is water, you can you can ambush hunt these bucks on water. These bucks are doing a lot of running around, okay? Chasing does around, they're gonna come in for a drink. Okay, a lot of great bucks get killed uh, by sitting water. That is, that, is, that is a very valid tactic to use. You could also sit trails. Plenty of guys have success sitting in tree stands, sitting in ground blinds on, on deer trails, much like you would like if you're hunting Midwest whitetails, sitting on trails, trail crossings, um, rub lines, uh, you, you know, travel areas, be, you know, for, between doe bedding areas. Like those things absolutely work for coos deer. Coos deer have a, uh, a, a fairly small home range of only about a mile okay so they love walking in their own footsteps they're very predictable so um if, if you don't want to do the spot and stock thing um don't worry you can absolutely ambush hunt for coos deer you just might have to do a little more homework you know walking around and getting your intel you know tracks and deer sign and stuff like that so the next thing to keep in mind here and this is kind of a touchy topic but it is what it is um is i would strongly suggest that you try to increase your effective range with your bow. Um, if you're only proficient out to 30 yards with, with, with your bow, um, your chances of success are, are gonna be real, real slim, okay? So at the minimum, at the minimum, I would say try to increase that to 60 yards, okay? 60 yards, totally normal shot out here in the West. All right, and people go even further than that. Like, not all archers are created equal. Um, that's just a fact. Some dudes, I know guys that are more proficient at 80 yards than other people that I know that are at 40 yards. All right, so, and there's a so, so a few reasons for this why you want to think about increasing your, your effective range. One, you're in the wide open, you're in wide open country. Okay, there, a lot of times there's not a lot of cover to even get in tight on animals. Two, the ground beneath your feet is very loud, all right? Even if you're in your socks, okay, rocks rub on each other, they're noisy, the vegetation that you're moving through is dry, it cracks as you move through it, and then the coos deer are just super, super on edge. So all these little things matter, and you have to take these things into consideration, okay? So if you're making a big trip across the country, man, you're coming out, and you're only proficient with to 30 yards with your bow, um, man, I mean, have a great time, you know what I mean? But like asking for success at 30 is a big, is a big ask, you know, unless you're ambush hunting. If, if, if you don't wanna, if you don't feel comfortable um, shooting further, okay, that's fine, it's your hunt. Um, but I would just uh, be realistic with yourself and be like, you know what? Um, I'm probably not going to fill this tag or you can ambush hunt and you can, you know, set up for a closer shot. That's what I would do. All right, guys, that's going to do it. Bow hunting coos deer during the rut, man. It's one of my favorite things to do. The deserts in Arizona during the month of January are magical. And if you play your cards right, you could have a javelina tag in your pocket as well. Be bow hunting javelina and deer at the same time. So, um, Arizona has uh, gone through a few changes with the regulations, so I'm just going to touch on those real fast before we close this video out. Um, so uh, non-residents, so this is still an over-the-counter tag for everybody, but for non-residents there is now a cap, okay, so keep that in mind. Um, there's also buck quotas, species specific and unit specific, all right, so like all the units that are open for hunting, they have a, a coos buck quota and a mule deer buck quota. It is your responsibility, okay, before you go hunting, to go online and check the quotas to make sure that the deer that you're intending on hunting and the unit you're intending on going to is open for hunting, okay? How these work is once a quota is met, that unit will shut down for that species of deer the following Wednesday at sundown. So just keep that stuff in mind, guys. Like, like make sure you're legal um, and you're not getting caught somewhere. You're not supposed to be with potentially a deer you're not supposed to have. So if you like the video, please hit thumbs up. If you like the channel, please hit subscribe. January is gonna be here before you know it. I'm super psyched. Stay safe out there.